Hey guys, welcome back. Again, you're gonna want a piece of extra scratch paper because you show your work on another piece of paper. Question five and six have to do with the next scenario. It says, Wilt is a fine basketball player, but his free throw shooting could use some work. For the past three seasons, he's made only 50%, 56% of his free throws. So the probability of making it is 0.56. His coach sends him to a summer clinic to work on his shot, and when he returns, the coach has him step to the free throw line and take 50 shots. He makes 34 of his shots. So this is before the clinic, and this is after. He makes 34 of his 50 shots. Okay, so. Turn it to a dust fraction, decimal. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go to my calculator. Point 0.68. So it looks like um, he got better. But again, we understand that this long run frequency, if this line is at 0.56, at any given time, you might be up to 0.68 just from a single sample set but still um, arrive at a 0.56. Let's see if um, that is enough of an improvement to say that he has improved. So they ask us, is this result convincing enough? So we need to come up with a probability. And essentially, we're going to say if the probability of this outcome is less than 0.05. 0 0.05, so it's like, oh, that's highly unlikely. We're going to say we do have convincing evidence that he's improved. Or if we calculate the probability is greater than or equal to 0 0.05, we're going to have to say we do not have convincing evidence that he's improved. So we're going to have to um, calculate this. Okay, so the question says, we want to perform a simulation to estimate the probability that you would get a 56% free throw shooter, that a 56% free throw shooter would make a 34 out of 50. Okay, so we're going to simulate this. Awesome. So we have to think about this in the terms that we've seen before. If the probability of making it was in truth one in six, we would simulate it by rolling a die and deciding one outcome, right? So how are we going to simulate the probability of 56%? Let an integer be between no, no, not it, right? Let the integer be between 1 and 34. Well, where's that number 34 come from? Once again, that's there. That's not it. I'm trying to simulate 56. Okay, so we like this one and we like this one. We say if we're going to simulate 56%, let 1 in 56 be make, wait, yeah, 1 in 56 be making it, and then the other numbers be, um, then the rest of the numbers be missing. Perfect. And so that's what we would need. And then what does this say? It essentially, D says essentially the same thing. All right. So where are they different? Generate 50 random integers from, generate a random integer from 1 to 100. That's the same. With no repeats allowed. And count the number of make made free throws repeat the process many times we want to allow 
repeats because we're not actually selecting that person for a survey or anything like that. If I, if I um, say no repeats, that will change the probability. So when do I want to say no repeats? I want to say no repeats when I'm trying to select people maybe for a survey or a sample and I pick numbers from one to a hundred and if I've already picked them, they've already been picked. So I can't like pick them twice. Okay, so we're settling in on C is our correct answer. Count the made free throws and repeat this process. So we like C as our answer. Now let's look at number six. If the dot displays the number of made shots simulated of 50 free throws. So again, this means there are 50 dots. What's a single dot? That's a single simulation. Right? Oh, and I misspoke here. It says we made 100 simulations. So that means there's 100, 100 dots. And this is how many times they made it out of 50. Okay, so that dot right there means they made 23 out of 50 shots. Okay, we definitely have our numbers ready. So number 55.6 says, which of the following is an appropriate statement about Wilt's free throw shooting based on this dot plot? So Wilt ended up getting 0.68. He ended up getting 34. So we wanna look at when would Wilt get 34 or more than 34 and what are the chances of that? Remember we wanted to see what are the chances of getting that outcome or more extreme? So he ended up getting 34, and so that's three out of 100, and I like it because that is a number um, less than 0.05, so we do have convincing evidence that he has, in fact, improved. So which one would look the best? Which of the following is the appropriate statement? If Wilf were still only a 56% free throw shooter, which that's the part of the sentence we want, we have to assume he still is the same shooter he was before. So we like that. Then the probability that he would make at least 34, so 34 or more shots, is about 3%. We've done it. This is the answer we are looking for. The probability that he would make at least 34 shots is 3%. That matches our simulation and what we did in our class. All right, question number seven. Again, make sure you're using um, a piece, an extra piece of paper. So I'm just gonna import this here. All right, it says, question 5.7, a partially complete table that follows shows the distribution of AP stats exams for a class. So we look here and we say, wait, this has to add up to 100. So this is 30. The one and the two make 30%. The four and the five make 40%. So that means that 30% is left over apparently in this class 30% get threes. Okay. Select a student from this class at random if the student earned a score of three or higher. So again, showing your work, how did I get this 30? I took one minus 0.1, minus 0.2, minus 0.15, in a calculator and minus 0.25, that means I got that. You could have also added them up and subtracted them from one. 
Now let's select a student from this class. If they earned a score of three or higher, so three or higher, what is the probability that the student scored a five? So what's the probability of a five given they scored a three or higher? I got to ask these people to leave the room, right? So that means if it was 100 kids in a class, I'm asking these people, the 30, the 25, and the 15 to stay in the room. So given they got a three or higher, what's the probability that they got um, a five? It's 15 of those kids got a five. So now we have our um, fraction here. That would be 25, 30, 40. That makes 70. This makes sense because 30 did not get a score of three or higher. So what is 15 divided by 70? Two, one, four, we have our answer. Question number eight. In a class where there's 18 girls and 14 boys, if a teacher selects two students at random, to attend a party with the principal, what is the probability that two students are the same sex? Okay, this is interesting. The card game we did would help support this question. So I have 18 girls and 14 boys. Remember, we did a card game with kings and aces, right? So what's the probability that the two students are the same sex? Okay we did a tree diagram. So we're gonna do a tree diagram again to answer this question. All right, so we have our class and either it is a boy or a girl. So that's boy is 14 out of, we have to total them up, 32. And a girl, is 18 out of 32. All right, now, this is if I pick a boy first, and this is if I pick a girl first. If I pick a boy first, then um, now I have one less boy. I have one less person, and I have one less boy. One less person, one less boy. And this means I pick a boy second. All right, what is the probability this would have to be the uh, complement of that. So this would be 31 over 31 minus 13. It's 18 girls, and that makes sense. There's 18 girls left over because all you did is pick a boy. So if you pick a girl in the second, there's 18 girls still left to pick. Now, if you picked a girl first, there's one less girl, and you've already picked a person. And so that would be, if you'd picked a girl second, that would be the chances. And here, the uh, complement of that, 31 take away 17, would be um, 14 out of 31. Uh-oh. I want to do that, but it, it might be easier. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, that'd be a boy second. So what is a winner winner? They're saying two students are the same sex. Okay, same sex. So this is a boy and a boy, so I need this. And this is a girl and a girl, so I need that. And I can combine the two by merely adding because they're independent events. Okay, so what would that be? So it's 14 out of 32 times 13 out of 31, plus I'm gonna add it to 18 out of 32 times 17 out of 31. Okay, and that would be the likelihood of this happening. So let's figure out what that is. 14 times 13, 182. Two times 31, 992. So I'm going to do 189 divided by 992. 
oh, I'm gonna hold off because these are gonna have the same denominator. Okay, now I'm gonna do 18 times 17. So I'm gonna add these together, this one plus this other one, 18 times 17 over 32 times 31. Three hundred six. Okay, so if I'm adding them, they have the same denominator. So three hundred six plus one eighty two. Four eighty eight. All right, and so what is that probability? Four eighty eight divided by nine nine two. Point four nine two. We get our answer, A. Now, could we keep going in the tree diagram? Sure, I could keep going, but I don't need it to answer the question. Question number nine, suppose that a student is randomly selected from a large high school. The probability that the student is a senior is 0.22. Okay, so either they're a senior or they're not a senior. Either they have a driver's license or do they do, do not have a driver's license. It says the probability of senior is 0 0.22. So that means out of 100, there'd be 22 out of 100 seniors. What's the probability the student has a driver's license? That's 30%. So it looks like that'd be 30 out of 100. This is your driver's license. That's 30 if I talk to 100 people. The probability that this student has a driver's, the probability that the student is a senior or has a driver's license is 0.36. So they're saying this number, all these added up is 36 out of 100. That means we know the box here, right? It would be 100 minus that. So this has to be 64 because they said the probability that you're either a senior or you have a driver's license, let's clue in on that, the probability that you're either a senior or you have a driver's license is 36%. So these numbers have to add up to 36%, meaning that the complement, this would be you don't have either. Okay, what's the probability the student is a senior and has a driver's license? So they wanna know what's this. Well, we use the complement rule to finish the table. So using the complement rule, we can say this is 70, right? And this is 78. If that's 70, then this has to be six. And this would have to be 14. Right? And this would have to be 16. All right, all that's looking good. Now, what do they want? As we said, they want to know this box. Well, that would be 16% happen to be seniors with a driver's license. What's the probability the student, so that's why the denominator is still 100, is a senior and has it, it's 16 out of 100. Which number is that number? E, 16 out of 100. Nice, the security system in a house has two units that set off an alarm when the motion is detected. Neither one is entirely reliable, meaning neither one is a 100% likely to go off when something is there. But that's maybe why you have two, right? But one or both always goes off. Okay, so I need a little extra room. I'm just, again, you probably at home need some little scratch paper, right? So I'm just gonna take my scratch paper here. for number 10, one or both always goes off. Suppose for the motion in a certain location, the probability of detector A goes off. 
So either A goes off or it doesn't go off. B goes off or B does not go off, right? They said one or both always goes off. So what they're telling us is it's never where neither goes off. This is not go off. A does not go off and B does not go off. All right. The probability A goes off and B detector B does not go off. So A goes off. That's this column, right? Suppose for the motion to motion in a certain location, the probability that detector A goes off and detector B does not go off. So that's this one. And B does not go off. So they're saying in this box, that's 25. Okay, so if we did this experiment 100 times, we should expect that 25% of the time, A goes off and B does not go off. The probability detector A does not go off, so that means I'm here on this line. The probability A does not go off in general is 35, so that's 35. What is the probability that detector B goes off? So they're asking, what is this? What is just the general probability of B going off? We're going to use the complement rule to figure this out. Okay, so this would be 25, so this would be 75. This would be um, 65, right? This would be 40. This would be 35, okay? All that makes sense. What do they want to know? They wanna know what is the probability B goes off that is 75% of the time. Those are your multiple choice questions. Nobody in the world said probability is easy, but those are the techniques we've gone over. And we definitely want to test them before we go on break, before we forget what we've learned. Uh, check back on the next video for the free response.